Thank okay, you. good Thank afternoon, you. good morning, or even uh, good evening uh, to all of you who are uh, with us today for this uh, fifth webinar uh, dedicated uh, on, the, on the fourth sub theme of our World Congress, which uh, ECAF together uh, jointly organizes <clears throat> with FAO, and we do have also uh, FAO representative here with us, uh, Joseph. Thanks a lot for joining as well. Uh, I think uh, an awful lot to, to Saidi, who, uh, well, uh, who we invited uh, at a rather late stage to talk uh, to us about promoting CA-based knowledge and in innovation systems. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he has, uh, well, the full picture uh, ready to uh, tell us about how to promote best CA-based knowledge and innovation systems because, uh, well, this is a real crucial issue in uh, outscaling and upscaling uh, conservation agriculture. We all know that we uh, know of, of the benefits of conservation agriculture. We know uh, that there is so much evidence uh, about these benefits and uh, that it's working uh, all over the world. But what is actually needed is to spread the word and to, uh, well, and to inform about the, uh, those benefits and the success uh, that we have, uh, we may have with this uh, spreading and uh, in innovation and knowledge transfer is actually crucial to outscale uh, conservation agriculture. And especially uh, in Africa and also in Europe, we need this uh, information and communication uh, system to, uh, to get ready uh, to get our message across. Otherwise, we will uh, struggle uh, in the future to uh, upscale conservation agriculture. And for that, in my view, this, uh, this uh, topic of the Conservation Agriculture uh, con um, World Congress is a key issue uh, that uh, can help us tremendously to make uh, well, the change in, and upscale the CA. So uh, I don't want to uh, lose much more time. I shortly want to present our uh, uh, keynote speaker uh, today. Uh, most of you will know uh, Saidim Komba. He is the face of the African Conservation uh, Agriculture uh, Tillage Network uh, that is based in uh, Nairobi. He is the chairperson also of uh, the Conservation Agriculture Regional Working Group uh, for Southern Africa. Under his uh, guidance, ACT has widened its international and continental stakeholder membership through the first and second Africa Congresses on Conservation Agriculture. Uh, and there, uh, there came out uh, very important uh, declarations that uh, helped to uh, spread uh, conservation agriculture in uh, Africa. Uh, the ACT uh, network has also partnered uh, together with uh, FAO, together with uh, ECAF, with ourselves. We do have a memorandum uh, of understanding uh, with ACT, and uh, I think this is very important, and therefore uh, Saidim Komba is uh, the right person to uh, talk to us today about uh, the promotion of CA-based knowledge and innovation systems. Said is also uh, currently uh, the technical uh, secretary of the International Conservation Agriculture Advisory Panel for Africa uh, and editor of the Continental Network uh, CA Alert, uh, News Alert. He has published uh, a lot on uh, smallholder mechanization, conservation agriculture and entrepreneurship. So uh, I think he's really uh, the uh, most indicated person to talk to us today. Uh, Saidi holds a uh, master degree uh, in engineering from the University of Gulf uh, in Canada and also a uh, bachelor degree uh, in uh, mechanical engineering from the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanz uh, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't want to uh, say more. I think uh, Saidi is well known to all of us and uh, uh, with these words, I give over to pass over to Emilio to moderate the session yes. today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Vas. Uh, 
president of ICAF. Uh, may I, uh, well, welcome also all of you. And, and uh, I joined the, the, the nice words from Dr. Saidi. I think he's uh, the best, uh, probably one of the best people and the best person and technician and engineers and, and friends who can talk and share his knowledge today with us about Africa. Let me uh, uh, explain in, in one minute that uh, we will have the presentation by, by uh, Saidi. And then in the question and answers, you see in the, in the Zoom, there is a specific uh, place for you to raise your question and answers. And now after Saidi's presentation, I will uh, try to summarize the, 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 the feelings of the, of the uh, participants by making him the, the question and answer because um, uh, you, you can only uh, transmit uh, your interest and your, your questions through this uh, via, by writing in this, in this place. Thank you very much and, and please say the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Gottlieb Bash. Uh, thank you very much, Emilio for the kind welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to the organizers, uh, ECAF and FAO, to, to have me in this, uh, in this meeting. I will share as uh, has been uh, asked for on uh, the promoting conservation agriculture-based knowledge and innovation systems and the information sharing and communication. And uh, the topic is indeed wide, so I will contribute what I can, and uh, I believe we'll have more and more discussions during the uh, Congress itself. So I will have uh, some uh, seven steps to, to share with you. One is the, uh, the role of agriculture in the global economy. Uh, two is uh, some and trends on, on conservation agriculture and how uh, knowledge information sharing is, is uh, supporting that. And then uh, some frameworks on uh, thoughts on how knowledge information sharing is uh, interlinking and contributing. I'll then uh, uh, present several channels on conservation agriculture knowledge generation and information sharing. Uh, and then some, some outcomes. What, what has knowledge information sharing done to, to contribute to the adoption and impact of CA? And then a few thoughts on what I think we need to, to, to do to action more to get uh, knowledge information, uh, to, to get more adoption on culture. So uh, the role of uh, agriculture worldwide is, is very significant with uh, 2.5 billion globally, depending on agriculture for their livelihoods. It's uh, more, even more important when you come now to the smallholder farmers in, in uh, <coughs> Asia and Africa where it employs 65 to 70% of, of the workforce, for example, in Africa, but also it supports almost 90% of the livelihoods in Africa. And uh, its contribution to the GDP varies greatly. You can see on the left, uh, it, it's very low in countries like Canada, maybe only one to 2%. Uh, increasing to almost 15% uh, in India. And, and talking about Africa, it's, it's, the range is also so huge, three to uh, 4% in, for Botswana and South Africa, but then increasing all the way to 50% in Chad. So it's a real important uh, area, which we must see how we support it, uh, the livelihoods of all those people uh, depending on it. Um, agricultural transformation uh, and how it relates to conservation agriculture. Uh, we see that uh, productivity 
growth and productivity is, is very important for, for agricultural transformation. As uh, people opt to use and can uh, utilize modern technologies and inputs. Uh, it's also key in addressing climate smart agriculture practices in uh, agricultural mechanization, agricultural options, youth and women, uh, institutional capability and so on. But uh, we can also look at uh, conservation agriculture, uh, given that uh, farmers can grow with less. You, they are able at least to increase productivity without investing too much, uh, which means it can actually go beyond productivity. It is an opportunity for farmers to not only increase productivity, but also sustainability and efficiency, and eventually uh, support or link production to conservation and to livelihoods. Now, now looking at the statistics from Amir Kassam uh, at all, uh, we, we, we're realizing that the cropland under CA worldwide is about 180 million hectares. Uh, however, the, the bigger, the land share of that, almost 70% is uh, in, in uh, uh, almost 63% is in South America and 28 in North America, with Australia and New Zealand uh, coming uh, in, in the second place. Africa and Europe have uh, the lowest uh, proportions with only 1.5 million hectares or slightly more these days for Africa um, and, and Europe uh, being at 3.56 uh, uh, million hectares. Now the big question is how comes others have uh, such huge adoption and, and they're benefiting from the technologies while uh, uh, other continents like Africa are not there? Or ask differently, how can we turn around the table so that Africa is at the top of the table and, and not otherwise? But we also want to look at uh, the uh, the roles, the the roles or the contributions of uh, knowledge and information management to 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 that adoption process. Now, two key terminologies which might be important to define. One is uh, information, and we all that information is facts provided or learned about something or someone. Uh, that is information, is facts provided or learned. Uh, coming to knowledge, we see that we require information, but in addition to information, we also require skills, uh, which can be acquired through experience or education. And, and the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. So information is necessary for generating knowledge. Uh, knowledge is the bigger part where now somebody can go to, 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 to act, uh, to, to really uh, trigger the adoption. So it's about uh, how to affect behavioral change that triggers adoption uh, from either a pull or a push effect. And uh, looking at the right uh, figures, we, we, we are seeing the limitations and challenges that are relating to access to relevant knowledge information. We have about nine cornerstones and they're not new. They are the usual things that we encounter. And uh, we are reminded that they are all important. Their contribution is all very important to effecting adoption of the technologies. And uh, there are some frameworks that have been developed uh, to explain how these nine elements or nine cornerstones relate to each other. And uh, perhaps which are the opportune entry points and which ones can come late. We are however still reminded that ignoring some of these uh, elements in a value chain systems they become the weak links and, and uh, they can create failures in the overall adoption process. So the this framework 
it basically has three sides. The side on the element is about the institutions that uh, are known for generating knowledge. The, the institutions on the right, or the, the agricultural value chain actors and organizations, they constitute of the consumers. They constitute of uh, those that um, usually require the knowledge so that uh, they can utilize it. Uh, the knowledge generated from the left-hand side, whereby we have got the agricultural research and education systems, where we have the agricultural education system, uh, the agricultural research system in, in the public or private sector. And there are those institutions in the middle, the bridging institutions they are called, which are basically conduits or channels uh, for taking the knowledge that has been generated and uh, repackaging it, uh, analyzing it, transferring it or enabling it to be consumed by the uh, the users on the right hand side. Now there's a, there are a lot of processes which go in there uh, from targeting on or depending on who requires the information or how it can be effectively uh, utilized by the consumer uh, element. So the, the framework in short, it shows how people and organization join together to promote mutual learning, to generate share and use agriculture related knowledge and information is about promoting mutual learning, generating, sharing, and using agriculture-related knowledge information. Uh, there is a systematic connection of uh, stakeholders or people uh, to the best practices, to the knowledge and expertise that they need to create value, but also addressing the disconnection between uh, farmers' indigenous knowledge extension and research. And finally, the need to uh, for coordination and integration amongst the different stakeholders. In the African context, uh, one example of such a framework is uh, the one which has been uh, recently developed. Uh, is about. Uh, uh, seeing the benefit of mechanization or rather sustainable agricultural mechanization to support the adoption of conservation agriculture whereby the framework for sustainable agricultural mechanization was developed by the african union supported with the uh, the food and agriculture organization the fao and it is 10 elements and one of its elements element six is basically about uh, conservation agriculture. Uh, knowledge and information management has been identified in this framework as a key driver in operationalizing the framework and, and, uh, uh, and another element, element 10. And this has led to the development of uh, the Africa Mechanized Platform, which is aiming to enhance knowledge management, information sharing, networking amongst the partners. So it's a, a reality transformation on what is felt on the ground to be important and uh, developing some instruments that uh, can actualize the needs of uh, integrating those. So I'll now quickly go to some of the channels, uh, but perhaps not channels for information sharing and communication alone, but these are also uh, research generation um, and also co-innovation. So one of them is uh, the research and co-innovation support for experimentation, adaptation and appropriation of uh, CA knowledge. The second one is uh, training at the different levels. Uh, national and international. And then uh, we will look at uh, the CA communities of practice, how knowledge is uh, shared between common interest groups, the conservation agriculture centers of excellency, the world and regional congresses on conservation agriculture that have been happening over the years, 
uh, the role of publications, uh, scientific, uh, journalistic, shared in print and soft copies, but also international, regional, and uh, local study tours. And I uh, will also talk slightly about uh, the farmer field days. Now, the, the, the knowledge co-innovation uh, is, is, is uh, one of the very important uh, channels. And, um, and here we are talking of uh, how research and, and co-innovation can support uh, for, for supporting experimentation and adaptation and appropriation of CA knowledge can become or is an important uh, channel for, for, for supporting uh, adaptation. So, One of the uh, structures for, for research and co-innovation is, is the innovation platforms. And uh, in innovation platform, you usually have the coordination, you usually have the information and capacity building, but you also have the true experimentation where you can set up trials or validation trials uh, to bring the proof of concept on how a certain technology works or not in, in given context. You also have the ability for, for information and capacity building uh, guided by the social economic uh, circumstances of, of where the innovation is being carried out. And based on these results, you can now extract specifics that uh, can influence the policy and advocacy. And we have uh, examples of, uh, an, in, in no way exhaustive, of institutions that uh, have been uh, pioneering this, uh, this work. Embrapa has had uh, research in conservation agriculture for years as a leader. And I'm sure a number of us have learned on, on how CA works from the uh, the research work or the co-innovation research work done by Embrapa and its national uh, research uh, institutions. But lately we have uh, the very good work being undertaken by um, uh, the, the Bolag Institute for South, uh, South Asia. In Africa, we have the Howard uh, Buffett Foundation supported the uh, Nautil Center in Amansha in, in uh, in Ghana, and uh, of late, we are also seeing Chico University in the US coming up with some uh, of these co-innovation uh, systems. Now, research and co-innovations are, are, are so important because uh, they keep adoption grounded. Uh, farmers and researchers can see and seeing is believing and, and uh, dynamic in that uh, the contextual, contextual realities of, of the farmers, of the communities are actually being validated on site for people to, to see and believe whether the technology works and how it works. And, and immediately from, from, from those uh, research findings or experimental, the visibility of the ex experimental uh, trials, farmers can immediately pick messages on what works and implement it in, into their farms, but also other stakeholders, whether they are educators, if it's professors, they can utilize the research findings to fine tune their curricula and, and, and so on uh, along the other, the other beneficiaries. Uh, there is a, a note, however, that uh, innovation platforms should not focus solely on conservation agriculture, but rather on the underlying shared complex problems, which form obstacles to sustainable agricultural intensification and agri agricultural sector development. This was a, a concluding statement from one of the ACP uh, implemented programs funded by the EU 
and, and with the European uh, Embrapa and, and other uh, North-South partners. Um, coming to the issues of uh, international, the training issues, we, we are seeing that uh, conservation agriculture is, is only starting to be mainstreamed in, in uh, agricultural college uh, training curricula. However, it's not as much as we would want it because of its importance. And uh, the training normally is to farmers, to students, and all other stakeholders is, is, is necessary uh, for the promotion and adoption of CA. And um, we have had the challenge, for example, that uh, the graduates from the colleges, the, the, the future extension officers, do not know what conservation agriculture is, in, where conservation agriculture is not covered at, the, at that uh, tertiary uh, college curricula. And uh, when they come to, to, to advise the farmers who are already exposed to, to conservation agriculture, normally uh, misunderstandings happen because they, they, uh, the farmers are more informed than these uh, graduates. So we are seeing now, however, that uh, there is a substantial uh, specialized CA training institutions coming on board. Uh, the Rwanda Institute for CA in, in Rwanda itself, which, is, which offers uh, a degree in conservation agriculture. I have mentioned about the Nautil Center in Ghana, which is not an agricultural college per se, but it is training for farmers and extension staff. I've mentioned about uh, Chico University, but Reading University has supported students over the years to do uh, degree courses, I mean, to do uh, research work on conservation agriculture uh, all over the continent. And with ACT, we have hosted almost close to 15 students from supported by Reading University to do their uh, master research thesis. One unique example I can mention is a, a program, uh, uh, the, the IFAD funded program in, in West Africa, which uh, had uh, supported ACT to, to provide internships uh, for 19 students. And we had uh, 19 students uh, supported by this program, one PhD, 11 masters and seven BSc. Uh, BSc. And, and the majority came from Bobo de Lasso University, but you also had some from University of Ouagadougou. Now, what uh, the message is here is, uh, the message here is uh, when we are developing uh, programs, projects, we can also include in those programs, the aspects of supporting students so that uh, uh, this, uh, this knowledge is taught to these students who become the next generation of extension advisors. They become the next generation of uh, bankers at uh, the, the national uh, financing institutions. And if they have this knowledge, then they can understand better what the issue is, what the opportunity is and, and uh, support it. But we also have uh, partnerships uh, that, uh, which are necessary in offering these trainings, uh, normally between the governments, UN agencies like uh, FAO, but also the private sector and farm organizations. Uh, on the right, you can see some of the training courses and one of the uh, famous training courses on CA has been uh, by ACT software as a network in different countries, almost 20 countries across Africa, but also notably the, the uh, Bolag Institute for Southeast Asia. And uh, I must mention here that we are still, uh, we, are, we are in the process now with the, all the evidence being generated to convince the education systems that CA uh, needs to be mainstreamed in the, in the education systems. And it's starting to happen. Then we have the communities of practice. And uh, the purpose is to enhance dialogue and actions on issues related to the promotion of CA. 
and, and these uh, communities of practice, uh, practices are voluntary groups of people who share a common pursuit, uh, activity or concern. However, we require a champion. And then we have uh, forums uh, where members teach and learn from one other, another. They regard each other as fellow practitioners, uh, teachers, colleges, and sources of knowledge. The few examples I have here is, is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the, of the UN, uh, Global Conservation Agriculture Community of Practice. And thanks to FAO for having uh, maintained this uh, program for so long. And also thanks to Amir for keeping it alive uh, 63 days a year, uh, Monday to Monday. But uh, in terms of community of practice, we also have the global, uh, the GCAN, the Global Conservation Agriculture uh, Community of Practice. And, and we have a number of members in there which whose uh, delivery, whose vision has been excellent. However, we, we, we could have uh, done more with, with that setup to, to get even more linkages uh, uh, as, as uh, looking at the capacities and capabilities that are in that in those membership. Another important channel is on the conservation agriculture centers of excellency. And uh, basically these uh, uh, ACT have uh, their own thoughts on how this should be supported. And the history is that uh, when we started uh, working with the national governments, we realized very quickly as we were setting up offices in, in Zimbabwe, in Burkina Faso, uh, in, in Kenya, in Tanzania, we, we realized very quickly that people were seeing the role of the network as, as that is ACT, that's the network, instead of seeing the network as themselves. So we realized for, for our messages to get integrated into what the government is doing, we have to work even closer with the national agricultural research institutions. We have to work even closer with the academia. So these uh, centers of excellence are actually hosted by the national agricultural universities, the national agricultural research institutions. ACT goes there to, to work with these institutions establish and, and, and only four uh, deliverables, uh, research, to do research uh, related to conservation agriculture, to do training, uh, particularly where a research institution is linked to uh, uh, an, uh, an academia, a, a training institution, a university, but also to do outreach, to make sure the communities around uh, the center of excellency uh, exposed and they become uh, partners to experimenting, validating these technologies and, and uh, ensure that they work. There's also linkages to make sure the communities who are around these institutions are linked to produce markets, to input suppliers, to equipment. And that is the big uh, uh, vision of these centers of excellency. Of course, the entry point was that uh, there is no not much hardware, we, we brought that concept with the software concept that we are going to start with the, the idea and then uh, seek support from uh, the uh, private, the national government itself and, and the regional and UN agencies to get, to get it realized. And uh, we are slowly uh, realizing uh, other national universities outside the Center of Excellence concept are now sending their students to these plots uh, to do their trials there, which is very, very encouraging for us. Of course, uh, the vision is big to have 25 centers by 2025. And the photo uh, is explaining one of the centers we have in Kenya uh, that, uh, and, and, and uh, what uh, is, is, is uh, delivering. As I said, uh, we are already seeing uh, 
uh, not only other universities outside the center coming to, to bring their students, but we are seeing the private sector also wanting to come and uh, partner with the centers to do trials there. And we think this is uh, the desired effect. This is uh, using the centers of excellency to eventually uh, get these professors, these researchers who are the trusted advisors to their governments to get uh, the conservation and agriculture message up there with the policymakers to get uh, the conservation and agriculture curriculum mainstreamed in, in, in that, uh, at that level. We have had also the World Congresses on Conservation and Agriculture uh, from Madrid, hosted by ECAF, uh, very, very, very proud of ECAF that uh, now they are hosting the Congress again after that many years uh, from 2001. And the list has gone, out, gone on uh, to Brazil, to Nairobi in 2005 uh, by ACT, to India in 2009, uh, Australia 2010, Winnipeg, Canada in 2014, Rosario, Argentina, 2017, and back to Europe, uh, it being hosted by ECAF uh, next year. And uh, from these World Congresses, uh, maybe we require now a, a formal study to, to find out what have these uh, Congresses done. But I remember my first learning, I mean, not my first, my initial learnings on CA were to a large extent from these very Congresses. And uh, I've shown here the proceedings from the Third World Congress. The next one is from India, the Fourth World Congress in India. Uh, this is the upcoming one uh, by ECOF next year. But the last statement here is about the unsung heroes. What I was saying, maybe we need a, a formal study to find out the impact of, of these, these meetings. One of the very senior people from Zambia, he was a minister for agriculture then, Minister Mundia Sinkatana, attended the Third World Congress in, in Nairobi in 2005. And he gave a keynote address in that meeting. But what was unique about this minister is he did not give his keynote address and move away. He stayed for the whole week. He was in all, he was there all the sessions. He also went to the field visits to, to see how smallholders in Kenya were doing it. And when he went back home, not only did he um, start mainstreaming CA in the Zambian uh, uh, systems, agricultural systems, but he himself practiced uh, conservation agriculture. And I believe it's not coincidence, it's not a coincidence that today Zambia is the is the first country with the small, the, the largest number of smallholder CA farmers uh, in the continent. I think, I believe uh, these congresses have uh, a substantial impact uh, to, to influence policymakers uh, to get the goodwill of, of the government so that uh, they, they can influence policy for, for change to start happening. And then we have the continental events. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about it, but I will talk more about uh, the two events that ACT have, have uh, conducted over the years. One was the, and, and these two events, they had attracted almost uh, uh, 915 participants from 42 countries. And the first one, uh, as uh, Emilio had said in, in his uh, uh, introduction, it enabled uh, the stakeholders, they had a declaration to have uh, 25 million farm families adopt conservation agriculture by 2025, which was fortunately endorsed by the AU head of, heads of state in the 2014 Malabo declaration. However, uh, in its broader context, as uh, 
climate smart agriculture. And that has supported a number of countries now to, to relook at their structures and how they can get a CA on board. We think this is a very positive step of uh, how uh, knowledge management, information sharing can enable people to see the big picture, uh, declare on, on what they desire to achieve, and, and for those such achievements to be uh, absorbed by policymakers and, and uh, brought into the mainstream. The second, um, the second uh, Congress, likewise, um, it had uh, several people. And, and in, in here, it was about making climate smart agriculture real with the conservation agriculture. And the mechanization, we had a special session on mechanization and its role in conservation agriculture. And I believe the roadmap we're having now of having the African Union uh, uh, support the development and implementation of the framework for summer, uh, the results of this uh, event. Documentation, of course, has, is, is very wide and uh, it can reach some of the targeted people, uh, but it needs to be tailored and uh, this only shows what uh, the different stakeholders have been doing. Um, it's very wide, it's, uh, FAO has done a tremendous job to keep uh, that documentation going, but now we are seeing uh, the European Conservation Agriculture Federation and, and other stakeholders now coming with different uh, information uh, to demystify uh, what sometimes is misconceptions, but also to set the directions on what is uh, what is wrong and what is false. I believe um, the majority of the people in Africa learned about uh, conservation agriculture from the very first missions that were organized by between FAO and, and, and MBRAPA, uh, the visits to um, by a lot of people from Africa, we are so vital for people to really appreciate and internalize what this thing called conservation agriculture is. And, uh, and, and these visits were initially to Brazil, but late we have seen also visits to other countries. Uh, and this of course includes uh, involvement of the media. The involvement of the media is very important when such visits are made so that uh, there is wider coverage, wider sharing, and also countering the, the misconceptions, misunderstandings. We have two good photos here. Uh, the, the one on the left is uh, the team of experts, which was in Cuba uh, to develop uh, some very interesting strategies there. And on the right is an example of uh, researchers who have uh, developed machines, who have developed technologies, and now they want them uh, to get them, uh, them there. Uh, this is our good friend, uh, Anna Mulhaki, with the, the VMP, trying to demonstrate it in, on, on a field in Bangla Bangladesh when uh, uh, the cash meeting, a lot of international uh, visitors were there. Farmer field days are also important, and here, it's, it's where farmers can see uh, from a neighboring farmer, not, not from a research field, but from a neighboring farmer that is very powerful for farmers to challenge each other and to believe that if the neighbor has, has managed to do it, they can as well do it and maybe even better. Now, we, as I said earlier, maybe we need a more purposeful uh, study to, to relate how the knowledge information sharing has adopted, has contributed to the CA adoption. But uh, as we said earlier, the knowledge information management is also about knowledge, knowledge generation, is also about researching to produce the evidence, is about uh, 
validating to the partners what is what works and what doesn't work. And I think, I believe uh, the achievements we've had so far in Africa, where we, we now had, uh, we now have more than 25 countries uh, practicing CA as a core production component of climate smart agriculture. Uh, mind you, this number was only less than 10, uh, uh, several, uh, about 10 years ago. We have increased, the, the area under CA has more than doubled in the last uh, 10 years. And, and uh, uh, need uh, to remind you that 99% uh, of the of the farmers we are talking about are smallholders of one hectare. And albeit all the challenges, uh, the technology is so good. Uh, our desire, our wish, is for every farmer to be practicing it uh, because of the known and obvious benefits from the technology. So my call to action, as uh, I go to my last slides, is, uh, is the need to strengthen that global coordination. I mentioned about the GCAN, but maybe it's not that uh, uh, institute uh, we require. Uh, there is need for, for stronger global coordination and networking. Of course, FAO has done an excellent job. Uh, but we want more because the technology deserves more uh, so that we can share more knowledge, more information uh, at continental levels. And, and uh, again, the UN agencies, uh, particularly FAO, I think uh, they have had played a unique role. They can still uh, take us to the next level. We are reminded that uh, the mobile phone penetration is almost 72% uh, in Africa. And with ICT, we can uh, invoke, we can utilize the, we can digi digitalize uh, technology. You can use digitalization so that uh, the youth who, who are savvy to ICT can support us to now to, to even uh, navigate the barriers to, to information sharing, make it easier for people to access more information. Uh, and, and this, of course, includes social media, where a lot of these youths can utilize their mobile phones now, not only to, to share greeting messages, but uh, make business or rather share more demanded information messages. But we can also use ICT uh, for more targeted impact documentation, monitoring, and evaluation. And finally, investment in C knowledge management information sharing by the private sector for environmental uh, sustainability. So taking you to Cuba again, and uh, finally saying, Thank you for, for listening. Uh, knowledge that is not shared is knowledge wasted. I thank you very much all for listening and uh, back to Emilio. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saidi, for this interesting uh, presentation about the, well, how we can promote the, the knowledge about conservation agriculture, how we can link between uh, regions, linking uh, farmers, students, universities, farmer organizations and, and, and NGOs. Now is, is uh, we are a little bit uh, uh, tight about the schedule, uh, but uh, we have a uh, room for some question and answers. I, I I would encourage all the participants interested in, in uh, addressing questions uh, to Saidi that use the chat box for that, the question and answer chat box. Let's start, uh, Saidi. We have uh, one from Shan, Shan Chuan. Uh, so, questions. Uh, to increase the balance promotion of mechanized CA and its related uh, innovation, what are the ex main experiences from a ACT 
I, I see that the promotion of CA and sustainable mechanization. What do you think? Uh, what have you done, your main um, actions in brief? And how would you encourage uh, young talents to participate in these uh, pillars of uh, research and innovation extension and, and application in CA? Great. Thank you, uh, Shang Xuan. Um, the first question, I, I hope I understand it, uh, to increase the balanced promotion of mechanized CA and its rich related innovation technologies. Oh, well, um, what I can say is uh, uh, the role of mechanization is so important in uh, getting uh, CA adopted. I think I've mentioned that earlier. Um, and uh, the, the entry point for CA in Africa has been, has been through the use of uh, the, the handhold uh, for the basins or the planting basins and uh, the, the depositing or sometimes the gel planter. But now, but, and, and uh, for those using animal traction, we have seen uh, uh, the use of the ripper. What we are realizing now is that uh, if these farmers can uh, have access to mechanization, they can do much more because the issue of uh, the implements is that they can be expensive, but also it's not a good business to buy a whole piece of equipment, use it for a week and then put it into the store. So with the mechanization service provision models, uh, a few specialized individuals can acquire the equipment, uh, hone their skills on how to use it, and uh, provide services as a business. And I think that answers your second question that uh, we actually now have an opportunity to, to create employment for youth as they provide uh, the, the mechanization hire services as a business uh, for farmers requiring uh, CA services. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, another question is is about the the support from governments. Uh, from uh, Yagub Guliev, uh, has any government supported uh, farmers for the CA implementation in the world? There are some experiences, I must say, but but uh, please, uh, Saidi, according to your experience. Um, governments, of course, uh, every policy, uh, politician needs the evidence. They require the, uh, the evidence from the scientists that uh, any technology promoted uh, will indeed work and benefit the farmers. So they, they also have naturally been uh, hesitant, waiting for the scientists to advise. And without the researchers having that uh, first hand information, it has not been uh, uh, easy initially. But now, now we are, we are seeing that a number of African governments are actually supporting uh, programs in, uh, in, in, in uh, conservation agriculture. Uh, conservation agriculture now is being recognized in the agricultural sector development programs in a number of countries, in Tanzania, for example. Ethiopia has in the last uh, four years, through a program with the Canadian Food Grains Bank and, and the ACT, they have almost uh, mainstreamed CA into their government extension programs. Uh, of course, those are the new innovations, but I mean, the newcomers, but we, as I said earlier, we have the government of Zambia, um, the government of South Africa, where CA is part and parcel of the uh, agricultural system and, and farmers are greatly supported to do it. Thank you, Saidi. Uh, from Carlos Telaya, uh, have you experienced the farmer field schools for the adoption of uh, CA? Yes, indeed. Uh, personally and uh, with FAO, ACT has been working with the, with the FAO in the CSAD and, and many other programs. And the farmer field schools was one of the approaches used in the uh, on-farm experimentation 
uh, which is a very participatory approach. Um, what was uh, maybe not very understood at that time was how to link these pharma, farmers beyond the, the, the knowledge aspect, how to link them now to, to businesses. Uh, at that point, when we were doing it, I think the, the approach was not quite clear. People uh, were a little too much inclined to doing the CA and, and uh, not in, including the linkage uh, aspects. Hmm. And uh, Richard, Richard Bell is, is inquiring about the, the innovation platforms. What the appropriate scale for an effective uh, cooperation or operation, sorry? Uh, village, district, regional, what do you think is the best? It, it, um, I would say it will depend on the value chains. Um, it will depend on what support is, is needed for these uh, value chains to succeed. Um, but uh, the base has to be the village because that's where if we are having a, a research experimentation, uh, that's the nucleus of, 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 of generating this uh, evidence so that it can be now shared with the other stakeholders. Uh, if we are in, involved in a livestock program, for example, and it touches the interests of so many districts, uh, regions, then you will, might need a, a wider uh, geographical coverage because uh, your, 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 your value chain will be touching several other stakeholders beyond the, the village community. And uh, Amir is inquiring about the, the, the conservation, agriculture, and climate change mitigation study. Is, is the, the, the study, uh, because all the governments are, are saying that they promote climate smart agriculture, how are you communicating the results of uh, CA and climate change mitigation to governments? Um, it, uh, it has not been uh, an easy journey uh, because uh, initially we, we thought we could uh, quickly <clears throat> acquire those uh, funds from the international climate uh, agreements. And, and so we partnered with ECAF to do a study on uh, what carbon sequestration does or what, what are the benefits in terms of uh, sequestering carbon from the atmosphere so that we sell it in that way. But the, the best message I must say, or the easier message I must say to governments is when you have farmers that are practicing CA that uh, are now food self-sufficient compared to uh, the prior situation when they were in, unable to, to produce enough food. And when you tell them these farmers are food secure because of CA, we have found that in one of the very dry areas in Tanzania, uh, the, the politicians are now listening. We tell them support CA. Of course, we know the carbon has been sequestered, but to these politicians, the selling point is that uh, these farmers have now turned their livelihoods from, from uh, hungry farmers. Now they are looking for markets for their pearl millet. And we found that uh, language uh, very easy to understand for the members of parliament uh, whom we, we, we made uh, a presentation about uh, the benefits of uh, conservation agriculture. Having said that, I think we still uh, have an opportunity on how to unlock uh, the, the sequestered uh, carbon in the soils from the international conventions, from the buyers, from, from those who are willing to, to offset uh, the carbon uh, emissions using CA. Now I have a, have a question from uh, Hafiz, Rumi uh, Janov, and, and uh, similar to, well, the Benoit Huar. How, uh, what are the challenges on the dissemination of CA and how do you cope uh, with them? And, and at the same time, challenges for communication are somehow also related to the lack of, uh, of uh, engagement from development agencies. 
uh, why is there enough lobbying for lobby for these uh, agencies so that they include CA in the bilateral agriculture development projects with the with the country? The, the biggest um, challenge, I must say, is, is actually not on the CA; is on the the majority of the smallholders that we are targeting in Africa. As, as you are aware, the, mid, the, the we have not Africa has not done justice to the middle uh, scale farmers. So our target has been the smallholders, who are the majority and the most vulnerable. But uh, just to let you know, the large scale commercial farmers are doing extremely well with CA in Africa. It's a very good business uh, farming the CA way. And uh, the differences between that and the smallholder farmers is uh, one of course is the knowledge, the education uh, about conservation agriculture, how to do it properly. Uh, coming from a background of, of generations of tillage based agriculture, uh, trans, uh, transiting from that uh, uh, old paradigm to this new paradigm is, is it takes some time. But secondly, it's about uh, uh, a number of the farmers we work with, they are still, uh, they still get punished by underproducing, but they also get punished by overproduction. So the issue of marketing is still not adequately addressed. So if they have overproduction of a, of a supply, uh, the market slump, they are unable to sell their produce to the markets. What is required now is taking them to the next stage, how they can add value to their uh, maize or, or their sunflower seeds and, and produce value added product, products with a, with a longer shelf life and, and or, or maybe even to, to livestock, how they can integrate their CA with the livestock as a way of uh, addressing the marketing issues as a way of adding value to their farming systems. And that is uh, still a knowledge issue uh, to address another uh, market marketing issue. And um, as I said earlier, even the NGOs need to change. I mean, the, where ACT started and now is, is different scenarios. When we started working with FAO and, and Comesa and SADEC, our focus was solely, almost solely on capacity building of uh, research and extension officers and farmers. Now we realize we must go beyond to, to make sure uh, CA is mainstreamed within government systems. And, and to do that, we need to lobby, we need the policy dimension. We need to make sure that CA is included in government programs. And to do that, you need now NGOs that are transformed by themselves to tackle these different challenges. And mind you, uh, uh, the, the education system uh, now we have a lot of expertise that uh, informs us on, on uh, convincing these policymakers to bring CA on board. And I, I would say a final question, and then we, we, we come to a close. We'll give the word to, to Joseph. But the, 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 I think this is an interesting point because there are sometimes you know, big policies or big initiatives and uh, Solomon Elacha is, is asking about, in the African context of full self sufficiency, how do you think that the green revolution concept, the Agra, which is basically about intensive agriculture in terms of cultivation, how it's, uh, which it targets high productivity. And do you see that in line with the conservation agriculture, society, this green revolution? I, I believe uh, Solomon understands that the Green Revolution has not worked in Africa. And, and one of the, the biggest issues is that those inputs uh, have not been available or where available, they have been unaffordable. And uh, ACT has done work with AGRA and uh, we, we have uh, made the proof of concept. We have uh, publications, we have videos. 
that uh, CA um, just having uh, the, the soil mulch cover, it, it has higher benefits than, than uh, using inorganic fertilizers alone. But combined, when you combine now the CA with the uh, inputs, external inputs, the, the, the utilization of the inputs is much higher. So we need, we cannot do with the, with the inputs, input-based agriculture alone. We have to have uh, uh, a system that is based on CA uh, for these inputs to, to for, the, for the efficient use of these inputs to be validated, uh, improved, and, and that's where we, we can uh, have the sustainability that we, we desire. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Saidi. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. I think it's been a very fruitful um, afternoon, evening, morning for us. And then I will I will give the word to, to Joseph to conclude uh, for the closing remarks of the webinar. Thank you very much again. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Emilio. I have to thank um, all the participants for staying on. I think uh, Saeed Koma, the CEO of ACT. And we should see that um, ACT is almost as uh, long in the business as FEO. I think it's, it started 1998 when the, the first ACT was put in alive together with the GI set at that time. And um, they've gone a long way. And um, same with ECAF, who is a very active association and has been holding the, the flag for CA also for quite a long time. It will be 20 years next year when we have the Congress number eight. So I think we can look back as a consolidated view. And I like the, the words of Saidi when he started about facts provided or learned. That's information. And um, it's good that we can use the word facts. And um, I like your example when you said that, um, <clears throat> first of all, the when the minister from Zambia stayed on in Kenya in the Congress to learn and to not just giving the speech. And also when you told us about the smallholders in Tanzania who basically have proven by, by living it and by handling it that the CA has um, helped them to overcome their problems with drought and with food insecurity. Um, yes, it's a, it's a, Long way to go, and um, I always see there's a continuum between tillage-based and no-till um, farming, uh, and the conservation agriculture concept is supposed to help us to go over towards no-till, and um, if possible, without increasing or introducing herbicide and uh, using agronomic principles and good practices with like the soil cover and the mulch. Um, and the legumes, so and the crop rotation. So we, yeah. For that reason, I'm also very happy that uh, ACT has kept on focusing on the what the centers of excellence and the ones that are existing. I think are fulfilling a, a very good role uh, in practically implementing the CA knowledge and facts. And I'm also very pleased that we managed together with our partners from the African Union to, to frame the framework from sustainable agriculture mechanization for the continent, for Africa in this case, and, and to have the, um, the good agricultural practices and the, basically the conservation agricultural principles embedded in as element number six, beside commercial and the socioeconomic aspects of the framework. And um, we can see that our partners have adopted it and we are going for it. And um, I think that's really good to see. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think we, we are line, getting lined up for having our next World Congress in Switzerland in June 2021. We are very hopeful that it will happen um, as an event, as we have practiced this before. And um, we are sure we will be all prepared um, psychologically and maybe also medically that we can have it 
And um, with that, I, I think uh, that's all I had to, to add on. And uh, thank you for continuing the collaboration with FEO. And FEO is, of course, happy to, to host uh, the com community of CA practices that Amir is um, still facilitating. And we have to thank Amir very much for that. That's a long story as well. And um, our new CA website is uh, constantly being revived as well. And um, the new FEO management, the top management, uh, namely Bess Bechtol, the Deputy Director General, she comes from a no-till farm from Louisiana in US. So we have a very high level um, colleagues in the organization and this will reflect also on our support. So with that, I think I'm, I'm supposed to close this meeting and I thank you, um, Emilio and Gottlieb and specifically Saidi for your, for your presentation and um, see you around in the future webinars. And if it's not too late, also Merry Christmas uh, to everybody because we are getting pretty close <laughs> to Christmas time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.